boy, boy, apical dominance. <laughs> Very often misunderstood rule of plants. And as a result, we're making so many mistakes in the garden. <laughs> and I'm guilty of that too. Number six, all number six. Oh boy. But don't worry, we are all in this uh, learning pool and gardening process. Now let's talk about this rule. What is apical dominance and how plants never break it? Before we talk about uh, apical dominance and how we can use it to a great success in the garden and also all the mistakes we make, uh, let's talk about meristem, what it is, because it's important. So meristem is a type of cells which are present in every single plant. Uh, they are like stem cells in humans. Stem cells can become any cell in human body. So the same with meristem in plants. They can become flowers, leaves, main uh, stem, lateral shoots, leaflets, scale leaflets, and so on. Why is it, it is important? It's actually a great evolutional uh, uh, defense mechanism, right? Let's say my branch there, which I, by the way, is shading my garden. I have to get rid of it. Let's say it falls and chops my gorgeous evergreen abovite here, emerald green. So half of it is gone. What will, be, what will happen to my abovite? It will live, but it will be disfigured for life. The main stem is taken down. That apical dominance is disturbed. So what happens? The side shoots will try to take over and I will get a somewhat disfigured shape, bushy side shoots, and my plant will be changed forever. And it's not going to look as gorgeous and it is as it is looking now. By the way, I'm helping Abovite to control that apic dominance and I, can, on a regular basis, trim these side shoots, you see, because they might want to take over. Abovites do not have a very strong apical dominance, where we have only one leader going straight up. These side shoots try to take over, and in order to have a nice, beautiful tree, which can withstand snow and not flop and break, we need to help our abovites. But I'm transgressing. Back to this meristem. It is present in every plant, and we were told at Master Gardening classes that uh, if you look at the big oak, old oak, the amount of meristem tissue present in that plant, in that tree, can be fit into a five-gallon bucket. So the amount of meristem tissue is not big in every plant, but it's so important. Now, let's talk about how we can successfully use um, apic dominance, first of all, what it is, and how we can use it in the garden. Ooh, there is a chipmunk, or I don't know what is happening here. I have so many shady corners in the garden that all sorts of happy little critters are making their houses here. Hmm, don't know. Apical dominance is the process when one type of meristem suppresses or inhibits the development of other meristems in the plant. And it is clearly visible on trees where the main trunk is growing very fast. It's not shaded by side uh, shoots. It has all the sun, all the energy, and it is fast growing, forming nice, beautifully proportioned tree. And very often, if that apical dominance is disturbed, let's say we cut it off or something happens to the tree, then that apical dominance is not there. The side shoots are activated on the trunk if they are present there, because some plants do not have side shoots. And if we cut that apical bud off, for example, in palm trees, that's the end of the, of the tree. But in trees, side shoots are activated and we get that bushy growth. And in trees, it can be uh, <clears throat> problematic if we don't know what we are doing. For example, here, look at this example. Here I have two trees growing uh, close to each other, and I think it's an accident that uh, uh, white pine, Pinus strobus at the back, I think it's a self-seeder, just behind my eastern hemlock. And now I think it's a blessing in disguise, because eastern hemlocks here in our area, in Connecticut, generally in New England, are dying off left and right, and I am always waiting for my eastern hemlock to be dead one season. Well, it's still growing, I suspect, because I keep uh, my plants watered here and eastern hemlock will survive longer if uh, the seasons are not dry. But anyway, come back to that plant behind. That white pine, somebody topped it. And look, you can clearly see it. 
After many years, the side shoot tried to take over and now the trunk almost self-corrected itself. You can see it a little bit, but plant uh, got its main leader after many years again Thanks to Mary Stem, which corrected itself, the side Mary Stem became uh, apical uh, b top bud Mary Stem, and it started to grow. And the uh, uh, white pine, Pinus strobus, is still there, growing okay. So just in case, I'm going to lose my eastern hemlock. It's going to be a bill to take it down, but we will still have a tree there at the end of my property. So that's a good example how. Uh, the ability of Mary stem to change into a different uh, um, plant cells can actually save a tree. I love this garden adventure of mine here on YouTube. Who would think so? Me being the introvert? <laughs> well, but majority of people who are watching my videos, around 70%, they're not subscribed. So please do check your subscription. And if you like my videos, please do me a favor and subscribe and be on this gardening journey with me together. Hmm. Follow this Ukrainian girl living in Connecticut, Zone 7A, uh, the United States. Well, I thank you for that. So how can gardeners use uh, the apical dominance in the garden? Well, we are using it over and over again. We all love uh, good structure in the garden, structural plants, and structure comes, comes very often with this uh, density of growth. So what do we do? In the plants, we trim them. And if we damage the main uh, vertical stem, the stem creates uh, side shoots and we do get eventually through years beautiful bushy plants which are keeping their shape well and um, keep structure in the garden. For example, here my azalea is getting bushy and bushy every year because I regularly trim it. And now what I'm doing, I left one stem here, uh, cut it right here three years ago and now it branched off. So I'm trying to form some sort of a ball here. It's a slow process, but you get my point. Gardeners love to disturb apical dominance to get bushy and nice plants, but not all plants love to get that apical dominance disturbed. Let's look into that. And one of them is our climbing roses. You cut the main stem and oopsie, oopsie, what happens? We disfigure the plant. We deprive us from ourselves from blooms. Let's talk about mistakes with apical dominance. The sun is gorgeous right now. We have wonderful October, the beginning of October. So mistake number one, breaking that apical, apical dominance too early, for example, in tomatoes. When tomatoes are small plants and we cut the main stem, right? Because we want bushy tomatoes. The side shoots might compete too much with each other and we will get a weak plant with too many side shoots. Well, mistake number two. Here we have uh, uh, basil at the back corner here. And if we refuse or we don't want to or we don't know that we have to uh, trim basil on a regular basis from the young age of the plant, we would get something like I have here. I will show you a lanky little thing came to me too late into my garden and look what a lanky little thing is. So this is the example, one plant. And then you have something like this, another plant. Oh gosh, this is heavy. But you see what the difference is? You get my point. And of course, basil is not looking very well during our cold nights here. But look how bushy and how well branched this plant is in comparison with this plant. So too late, uh, when we wait too late to um, break that apical dominance, it's also bad for some plants. Mistake number three, uneven asymmetrical pruning. So you have the plant which is growing this side too much and not here into this direction and gardeners think, okay, let me make a nice shape out of it. And they trim only one side and what happens? They promote growth on that side even more. So usually the advice is like a standard advice. If your plant is growing into one direction and you want it to grow into this direction, we assume that there are no shady conditions or something uh, which is forcing plant to behave that way, right? So your plant is growing on the sun and whatever reason it is growing only into this direction. You trim this side, you don't want to trim that side because trimming promotes growth. That, that apical dominance is disturbed in lateral shoots too. And then lateral shoots divide and create that bushy growth. So that's mistake number three. 
Mistake number four, ignoring regrowth after topping. Okay, we have boxwood and we just prune them regularly and they become too dense and very often I see the gardeners uh, refuse to go in and cut some of the branches off on the inside to make the plant more airy and boxwoods might suffer. I see it very often in the nurseries where the old boxwoods in the pot, they're sold and they're so dense that you can't even open the plant. It's majority of it is dead inside. There's no air circulation and plant suffers. It's not as healthy. So the failure to take care after the plant after doing the trimming or shaping it is also a mistake. Two last rules, rule number five, and then rule number six, which I'm guilty of. Rule number five, we ignore the natural growth habit of each plant because there is a difference between, uh, let's say, this hosta here and my rose and then a tree, right? Trees do very often have very strong apical dominance. For roses, climbing and, um, uh, sh um, climbing and rambling roses, uh, we need to bend main stems for them to create side shoots. We can't just cut it off because that stem might try to regrow, but it doesn't really divide. So uh, the climbing roses do not respond the same way to apical dominance as trees, let's say, do. They don't become bushy. Um, and then again, the boxwoods. We do trim them on a regular basis and we do get uh, uh, side shoots from them. And by the way, I wanted to trim my boxwood here. It's a little bit too late in October for heavy trimming. Light trimming is okay here in zone, seven, zone 7A. People in warmer climates, 8, 9, are happy doing all sorts of happy stuff in the garden. Hmm, not me. I usually, when it is getting colder, I usually hang out with uh, YouTubers in their gardens in warmer zones because those gardens are still green and my garden is going into the dormant season of winter. And mistake number six, six my guilty rule, which I uh, do not follow. It's a wrong uh, trimming season and it's a little bit uh, almost the same as too late or too early rule, too uh, late or too early pruning rule. So I do it every year, faithfully, with my nepeta in the front. The well, nepeta benefits from um, uh, trimming. After it just finishes blooming, trimming will encourage nice green growth and nepeta might even bloom again. Meanwhile, I'm waiting every time for all the pollinators to finish all the last blooms on my nepeta. And then I trim them too late and that can weaken the plant because plant doesn't have energy to create new growth, to collect all the sun rays and go successfully into winter. So wrong timing also is important to know when to prune. Again, boxwoods. Right now I'm not going to do heavy pruning because I might create, encourage new growth which will not harden for the winter. And a lot of gardeners think that, okay, so what? I, in the spring I will just trim off that new growth, damaged new growth. But it's not only about the new growth. Um, the stems are also activated. The, 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 all the processes in the stems, instead of life slowly uh, slowing down, slowly slowing down, stems are being activated again and they don't have time to go into the dormant stage where roses are becoming nice and sinister looking purplish uh, brown stems right for the winter well we're not there yet my roses are nice and green enjoying the sun well that's it my dear gardeners have a lovely day and i will see you in our next video as always happy gardening